So dudes, it's Tuhu. Acheron's finally here, so I wanted to get this first impressions video out there real quick to help anyone who's still on the fence on rolling her so that you can hopefully make a better informed decision about her. Especially relevant given my last video yesterday. I'll also get a full guide out on her soon, so look for that video later. Full disclaimer, this is what my Acheron's working with to make this video. She's E0S1, fully traced out, and she's working with the full 4-piece Pioneer set with a preliminary 2-piece Izmo Gensei set. I'ma also work on getting her a better attack percent planar since I kinda res for this one. First thing you probably want to know is, well, is she strong? Does she deliver in the damage department? The answer is absolutely yes. As we expected, Akron gets most of her damage from her ult, but what surprised me is how much damage she does even off her basic and skill. I've seen her easily hit for like 70k with her skill and even 50k off her basic. The caveat to this is that she only gets the sort of damage when hitting enemies that have her Crimson Knot marks, which are the weird flower things that you see above certain enemies. If Akron hits enemies that don't have them, then her damage output tanks considerably, so always target marked enemies. Akron's game plan seems to be this. You use her skill and ally debuffs to stack Crimson Knots onto enemies and to charge up Akron's ult. And when you use her ult, you want to target the enemies that have those knots to maximize your damage. It's fairly simple and straightforward, but there are a few nuances that I think you should be aware of. The most important one is the fact that Akron doesn't use the standard energy system, and the biggest effect this has is on Tingyun, because her ult doesn't give any charge to Akron. So at first you might think this is a bad thing, and to be honest with you, so did I. But then I realized that this actually isn't so bad because Tingyun can still support Akron with her skill because Akron still wants attack buffs and she can instead give her ult to a potential DOT Nihility teammate instead if you're running DOT supports for Akron like Black Swan or Kafka. That and it's not like Akron's really missing out on Tingyun's ult's damage buff since she gives herself tons of damage buffs already. Essentially, Tingyun, who's meant to be a hyper carry support normally, actually becomes a dual support on Akron teams that run DOTs and remains very much so a viable support. Akron not using standard energy also means that enemies hitting her won't give her energy either, since the only ways that she can charge up her ult are through her own skill and allies putting debuffs on enemies for her. This might not seem that big of a deal for a lot of people, but with ults being as strong as they are, popping them off immediately off an enemy hit so that you can start working on your next one ASAP is pretty important, especially in MOC where you need every advantage that you can get. What this means is that you don't need to mentally keep an eye on Akron's ult whenever enemies are attacking you like you might need to with other characters, because most of the time you know exactly when Akron's gonna get more ult charge in the first place, rather than have to react to enemy targeting RNG like randomly hitting her. Oh, and it also means that that one bipolar TV enemy dude in Panakini can't charge drain Akron when he's pissed, so... That's nice. Now, let's talk about her gotcha light cone. It is very important to Acheron. On its own, that's not surprising since most 5 star DPSs in Star Rail perform significantly better with their signatures, but remember Acheron's non standard energy gain. Because her gotcha light cone has a debuff of its own, the Mirage Fizzle debuff or whatever it's called, this means that Acheron gets 2 energy off a skill when with any other light cone, she'll only get 1. And when she uses her technique to initiate, she also gives herself a stack immediately off of every new wave for that fight with her gotcha light cone. If we're only talking about numbers, as in how much damage Akron does per individual ultimate, something like S5 Goodnight actually feels only slightly weaker than S1 Passing Shore. But Passing Shore's extra debuff, which allows Akron to significantly increase her energy gain, means that it's not just a big stat boost for her, it's a huge overall damage boost since it lets her charge up her ultimate way faster than she will without it. If Akron had normal energy gain, it's like her gotcha Lycon has a free 20 to 30% energy regen boost effect on top of all its crit and damage bonuses. For reference, remember that energy regen ropes give you about 19%, so it's like Passing Shore has an energy regen rope built into it and Akron still gets to run an attack percent rope. This in turn means that her gotcha light cone is the only way for her to gain this sort of energy regen boost for herself. Normally if a DPS has energy problems in Star Rail, you can remedy it with supports who can give charge like Tingyun or Huo Huo, or god forbid you can even give them an energy regen rope if you really want to. But since you can't do this for Akron, as in these aren't even options for her in the first place, this makes her light cone, in my opinion, a much bigger crutch for her than most other 5 star DPS 
Nokia signature light cones are for their respective characters. Matter of fact, I'll go out on a limb and say that Akron is probably the most dependent on her gotcha light cone out of all the DPSs in the game so far, until such time comes when MiHoYo adds either a 4-star light cone or another free 5-star light cone in Sim Universe Shop or, or something like that. That also lets the user put a separate debuff onto enemies when attacking. So I would say for now that if you're serious about investing heavily into Acheron, and you should with how strong she is, you should also strongly consider rolling her Light Cone as well. But on a conceptual level, at least from what I can tell, Acheron feels like the next evolution of splash damage characters. And by splash damage characters, by the way, I mean any DPS in Star Rail who deals most of the damage to a single target and also does some damage to adjacent targets. And we know that splash damage characters are the meta DPSs in the game. Game, like Daniel Alter, Jing Liu, and Blade. Not only does Akron have her own splash skill where she can hit three enemies like the other destruction characters can, but unlike their ults, her own ultimate is true AoE, as in it hits everyone. And because multiple enemies can have Crimson Knots, she can deal enhanced damage against multiple targets within the same ultimate. So what this means is that you can distribute Akron's damage exactly the way you see fit between enemies that have Crimson Knots, depending on who you want to prioritize breaking or killing first. And having this sort of power, in my opinion, is what puts her a step above the rest, even above Daniel Alter. TLDR, Akron is probably the strongest DPS in the game now, but with a catch. She needs to have her gacha light cone. Without it, she's probably on par with Blade or maybe even Jing Liu. Again, these are just my first impressions and they're subject to change as I keep playing Akron and figure out more stuff about her. And again, in the meantime, I'll be working on a full guide video for her in the coming week or so. Best of luck with all your Akron rolls if you guys haven't rolled for her yet, and thanks for watching.